have to watch for damn snakes. This place is full of copperheads and rattlesnakes. I damn sure don't want to get bit by one of them today. That's all I'd need. I've stumped through these damn weeds many of the time trying to find the water. All them damn stinging weeds and things leak you up. This is a hell of a way to make a living, making this goddamn liquor. This will be the last damn run I ever make, though. I couldn't have made this run if I hadn't had a lot of help. It's a damn briar thicket. I don't know whether we can get through it or not. Let's just go back down and try to get off in there down here at this lower point and see if we can get in there. Boy, there's plenty of good clean water right there. There ain't nobody lives above this. I can't hardly get around anymore. That's the reason I've had to quit. If I get this run made, I'll be damn lucky. That water's pure as it can be. There ain't nothing in it but pure bear shit. Damn cold enough, it'll cool that worm in a hurry. I think right here would be the damn real place to set it. Just dig out right in here and set it right in there. We'll go on now and maybe look somewhere else after a while, but when you see these water weeds like this are growing along the branch, that's a sign of water. We'll make some real liquor. Our stinging weeds either one, there's plenty of them damn things. It's hard work, isn't it? Hell, ain't nothing no goddamn harder. Anybody to have a man caught for trying to make a drink of liquor ain't nothing but a dirty son of a bitch. I don't care who they are. Pretty good, even old motor is burned up in it. My good day model come up here in second year. some STP oil treatment in it. Maybe it'll stop burning so damn much oil. This thing's 72 years old. I guess it's got a right to burn some oil. Lost my oil cap and I had to make me one.
I hear water running out there. I'll go out there and see what it looks like. I'll get these damn weeds down. Well, that's good cold water, too. This would be a pretty good place right here, I guess. Get right over in there. Run a hose in the creek up there and run it right over to it. Well, this is two places we've found. Uh, I don't know whether we'll put it here or not, but if I do, it'll be right over there in that briar patch. That's good cold water. It's got big water weeds are growing beside it taller than they was that other place we checked. So if you can find these where you get your water at, it makes good liquor and turns out real good. It makes quite a bit of it. Of course, you're just going to make so much, no matter what kind of water you got. You can't use the city water because it's got all them chemicals in it. It won't make liquor. It's best just to find a small spring or a branch or a small creek like this. You can make some damn good liquor then. So I'm going to go on back in and we'll study about which place to put this thing. But we'll check another place probably or two before we do this. Now, after we pulled that rough ash mountain to getting up here on top of the mountain where it's kind of level at, we got to look for some water at one more place before I decide where to put this thing. So, we're going to drive on around here a little bit, and I know where some more water is. We're going to look at it, and if that's suitable, we'll have to determine which place to put it. You know, we looked at two yesterday. Now we're going to look at this one and see which of the three it will take. Well, now right here is a nice little stream of water. It's got water weeds growing along it too, see? Like them we pulled up yesterday. As long as you see water weeds and stinging weeds, it'll make liquor. I bet that's as cold as it can be. Let me go up there and check it and see. Yeah, that'll cool that worm for sure. Got branch lettuce growing on it too. See right here? 
That's what you call branch lettuce. That's good stuff. You can take and cut it up and put onions in it, pour hot grease on it. That's some fine eating with cornbread. I'll set that one back out. I don't believe in wasting nothing. But we'll go on up higher and get out of the clearing here so much we'll get up in the woods where nobody can't find us too easy. To set up a steel, you need the pot, the cap, the thump keg, the worm, the cooling tub. Uh, well, you've got to have tools, of course, like an axe and a shovel and a hole and stuff to dig out the hole with to put the pot. And then you've got to carry in the ingredients to make the liquor out of, of course. Corn, malt, and sugar. And Then you have to cook it in. It has to work off. Them. I have had some to work off in three days. I have had it five, seven, ten days. In the winter time, it takes thirty days. But uh, it's summertime now, and it should work off in five days. So we're going to go on up through here and pick us out a place to set the pot. I had a damn door knob back, see? Didn't I? Well, we're fixing to build a furnace around this thing. Somehow or another. If you use this mountain dirt here, it'll fall out of the rocks when they get hot. But this red clay here, it come out of Tennessee. We went there and got it the other day. And I don't know where it's at around here, but there's plenty of about all they are in Tennessee. But I'm gonna have to take my time. My, my hips are hurting real bad. But we'll get her built here maybe at 12, but don't we'll finish it tomorrow. I got that fit just like it's made for that hole. Now throw that right up on them up, right between them up with two rocks. Right in there. Now come on down and throw me another one right below that. That's some real mud though, that's thick. That's 
sets up, you can't knock this down. Yes, sir, Moonshiner lives a hell of a life. Did somebody teach you how to do this stuff? Well, no, not really. I've had a lot of older people tell me things, but the only way you go learn any damn thing is do it yourself. I don't care what it is. Once that mud sets up, I tell you what, it'll be harder than a Methodist minister's pecker. <laughs> Boy, there ain't nothing to making this damned old liquor, is there? All you gotta do is sit on your ass and make old liquor. That's all you have to do. Beats all I ever goddamn seen. I get up on there. I gotta make that and hold that one down, see. The rocks on the side of the barrel, it makes more heat. It keeps this, if you didn't have rocks around that, the heat would just come out here and go away. Them rocks hold heat and makes it go back that way. cook a pot of beans right here on this. Or taters or whatever I can catch. I'll have to rake these leaves out around this full fire to catch the damn wood to fire. They'd come in here to put the fire out and catch you. Right here. Now this is gonna be the last damn steel furnace I ever built. I mean this, I just done this on account of making this video so people could see how an old, how rough an old moonshiner's life was. This is the last damn run of liquor I'm gonna ever make. And I guess, I guess them revenue officers will be glad of that because they won't have to watch me no damn more. They've been watching me all my life. So I guess they can, Go after some of these dope dealers or something now and leave me alone because I won't be bothering them no more. That's what they should have been doing to start with instead of fooling somebody for a drink of liquor. Ain't nobody gonna work this damn hard no way. Not nowadays, they don't have to. Why do you think anybody would have ever turned you in for making liquor? Well, they thought I was making a dollar that they didn't get. You know how the world is. They see you making a dollar and they don't get half of it. Makes them greedy as hell, I reckon. I hope whoever I hope whoever turned me in, by God, may they rest in hell. Is all I can say about it. And they probably will. Cause you see, there ain't a thing here that I didn't pay for. I didn't steal a damn piece of nothing that's here. Paid taxes on the copper, paid taxes on the sugar, on the jars. I didn't steal nothing, so I don't think I broke the law anywhere. Where I was raised at, old man Abe Silver, he used to make liquor. He'd come walking down the Hemp Hill Road where I was raised at. One time he fell right in front of the house over there in the road. Had a load of liquor on his back and tow sacks. He, he's drunk and he fell. He busted 
two or three yards of his liquor when he fell backwards. You could hear him cuss for five miles. I guess so, because back then liquor, I mean, that was your life, you know. If you didn't have nothing, by God, you'd starve. But they said old Abe was one of the best in the world at it. Now give me some more, JB. Good deal. Just right in the right spot. Did people who made liquor use it to for money? I mean, instead of using actual cash? Yeah, you you can trade liquor. I've traded a mini with jar for things I need. I sold a fella some liquor one time. He said he he's into the heavy equipment business. I ain't gonna tell who he is. But anyway, he said he went and bought this piece of heavy equipment. And the salesman that sold it to him knocked off a thousand dollars on that piece of equipment for one jar of liquor. I sold a fella a jar the last jar I sold. I told him what the price was, and he gave me a five dollar tip. According to what kind of product you got, what you get out of it. Boy, it's looking great, ain't it? Would you say that moonshine is less common than it used to be? Why hell, you can't find it no more. I mean, decent liquor's gone. Cause ain't nobody gonna work this hard what you've seen me work today anymore. What about the moonshine you can get for five bucks for a quart or whatever, you know? Five, five dollars a half gallon? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't want to drink none of it, because I'd say it'd take hair off a wooden leg. So the that stuff may, isn't made the same way that you're making it here? Oh, no. They use sheet metal pots and put rubbing alcohol in it. I wouldn't do no such a thing as that. If I do, I, I'd just quit. Well, I never have. Of course, I ain't gonna make no more anyway. It don't matter. I'm just doing this to show people what it's all about or I wouldn't be up here busting my ass doing this. Maybe somebody will appreciate someday what what I'm doing, you know. Cause in the next five years, there won't be no more moonshine liquor. Be a thing of the past. And I'll be dead for then anyway, so it don't matter. A lot of skill in it. That's it, if you don't know how. And I'm the last one that's left beside JB. JB can keep carrying on the trade, on the tradition, but it's all over with for me. When I get done with this, that's it. Thank you, I guess so. Gonna have to have it, looks like. As bad as I dread it. Huh? That's a dying heritage, too. Well, I tell you what, my granddaddy helped build uh, the first Baptist Church is built on Hemp Hill. Uh, he made liquor all his life. He he made liquor, and and I've been told this to be the truth too. And he would uh, he took the liquor and sold it, and then took the money and helped buy the materials it took to build the first Baptist Church on Hemp Hill that was ever built. I guess no matter what kind of, how you get your money, I mean, if you put it in the right place, I guess the good Lord probably bless you for it anyway. Whether you got it selling taters or making liquor, don't matter, don't reckon. Don't to me anyway. What do you cut that hole for? I'm gonna put this stove pipe up there. The old timers, they didn't have such thing as stove pipe, but I'm lucky I have. 
Old timers, they used to just build a furnace and that'll leave a little hole in the back and let the smoke go anywhere it wants to. The reason I've got this pipe on there is so that smoke won't come back in my eyes all day while I'm running this thing. That's one of my inventions. That's the prettiest rock I ever laid on a steel furnace. I mean, that's a beautiful rock. It's a shame to put that in the steel furnace. It should be in some big fine home somewhere. That's a real place to set my cook pot. Like that old song, I'll still write your name in the sand. I'll still write your name in the mud. And I love you and you know who I'm talking about. What you have to do to the new party? Hmm? What you do to the new party? Start smoking now. Let's get hot for it. We can't make good wiki, we'll quit. See, I couldn't beat my plug in there the way it was, it's too long. So you have to pull your backings in there to get above this cut place, Neil. So when it's steam comes in there, it boils that back into that cave. Hard enough the way it is, it makes life a little easier. I, I will.
I'm gonna wash these beans, getting ready to put on the cook tomorrow. And I don't do no nasty cooking. This is some of the finest damn hog days they are in the country. I got it in Broadnax, Virginia. That'll make them beans. You can, you can when you when you take a bite of them, your tongue will slap your brains out. It looks nice here in hell, but it's not. I've never owned a dishwasher in my life. I don't wash dishes anyway. But I've got a new invention here. That's my hillbilly dishwasher. Now, I mean, it'll do a fine job. Might take it all night, but it'll wash it. If it beats in there enough, it'll beat everything in there out. So by the time in the morning comes, that, that cooker and that fork will be perfectly clean. Well, I started smoking when I was six years old. Started drinking when I was six years old. Used to steal my daddy's Prince Albert tobacco and go out behind the barn, roll it up and smoke it. They say that smoking and drinking will kill you. I don't believe that. Cause my granddad lived to be somewhere around 90 years old. And when he died, I said that damn old liquor and them cigarettes killed him. I don't believe it. So I ain't gonna worry about it. I ain't gonna see 90 anyway. It don't matter. Like Dude Kegel said one time. <coughs> he said, when I die, he said, said they say, well, old dude, he's a good old fella. Been here, he's gone now. Said they'll, said they'll mention my name for a couple of days after they bury me. But he said, I'll be damned, said, when, when popcorn something never dies, said, it, it, it will never be stopped talking about. Said, it'll be a thing that'll last forever as long as time does. Old dude's a good friend of mine. Now I'm gonna tell you about my doctor. His name is Dr. James R. Milling. A damn good doctor. He saved my life one time. I'll not go into details about that, but he did. Uh, used to go up to his house and party on the weekend, on Friday or Saturday night or whatever. And was up there one Friday or Saturday night, and there's a, he had the parties down in his basement. And there was a whole basement full of well-to-do prominent people. I'll not say who they was, cause I don't tell on nobody for nothing. But anyway, I walked in. He said, folks, can I have your attention? He said, I want to introduce somebody to you. And they all like my liquor. He said, this is Popcoin Sutton. He said, I want to tell you something about him. He said, he has the most brilliant criminal mind I've ever seen in my life. So the party went on. Because I had plenty of spirits to make it go on. I've got four things in this world I'd rather nobody didn't mess with in any way. Number one is my old lady. The finest woman that ever shipped between a pair of tennis shoes. Second thing is my A model Ford. Two of them. The third is mess with my liquor business in any damn way. 
And the fourth is my damn cats. And I've got five. Six, six, six. I forgot about baby cat. She's never been out of the house. She'll never be out of the house. She sleeps on my arm right there, or lays her head right there. I just love my cats. But, uh, yeah, when I sit down at the table to eat, I put my plate on the table. She puts her back feet right there, puts her front feet on the table, and she eats out of my plate with me. Now, if you think I don't love that cat, there's something wrong. Well, down Cock County, there used to be two old traders. They traded anything, cows, mules. They used to take old dry cows, just about dry, and they went and milk them for three or four days and let their bags swell. Then they'd put a young calf on it and take it up towards Hot Springs up in North Carolina, up in the mountains, and sell it for a freshened cow. But they done it one too many times. They had one loaded up in the truck. They went up there. They got blocked in up there on one of them dead-end roads. All they come back with is a shirt on their back. They, they lost everything, truck, their money, and not a cow and all. They was lucky to make it out of there with their lives because the mountain people, they get mad when you cheat them. And that same one guy had a blind mule one time. Kept it in the barn. They had a little creek running down by the barn. The old mule been there so long he knowed the way to the creek to get water. Well, this old guy come to look at the mule, and that old guy forgot he'd parked a hay wagon out there that, he, that day they'd been hauling hay. He turned that old mule out and he'd run right in that damn wagon. The old guy looked at him, that damn mule blind? He said, hell no, he just don't give a fuck. If it wasn't for liquor, a lot of people would have died. See, most people are just drunk it to get drunker than hell off of them, but you can make some valuable medicine out of it. You can make cough syrup, which consists of honey, any kind of candy, lemon juice, a shake of black pepper, and liquor. That makes the best cough syrup ever was. And you can also buy a camper, come in a little block. Uh, you put that in about a, you take a pint of liquor and put a block of camper in it. And let it dissolve real good. And you can smell of it and rub it on the side of your head. If you've got a, a, a splitting headache, it'll, it'll slow it down or stop it once. My mom used to have a, every time that they'd come up there to play music at the house, She'd, them guys, they'd always bring a jar of liquor with them. Make music all night long. Banjo, guitar, fiddles, all night long. She'd get her a little pint jar and she'd go around and ask them if they'd, if they'd give her some of that liquor to make medicine out of it. And of course they would. So she'd put her a block of asphid in it. And I started drinking that when I was six years old. And, uh, I'd get in the medicine cabinet, get me a big sup of that, and I was on cloud nine for a couple of hours. Cause hell, I didn't drink it for the medicine effect of it. I drank it for the damn alcohol. But uh, I got addicted to that stuff. I love it right today. I don't even keep it around me, cause if I did, I'd, I'd drink it all the time. Well, there's the mice. It's been working now for seven or eight days. Today's a big day. We're going to crank this son of a bitch up. Debbie, taste it and see if it's bitter. If it's bitter, that's a sign it's going to make some good liquor and that's smart of it. If it ain't bitter, it won't make a damn thing. 
it's better. Pretty good, though. Don't look worth a shit, but it's pretty good. I'm talking about getting drunk on it, too. Whew. Yeah, that's good. It's ready to run. Well, I'm gonna put the pot there. Stainless steel is even better than copper to make liquor on because it don't get that green corrosion stuff in it. Like you see on the outside of this. There's none of it on the inside of it because you got to keep the inside clean. The outside don't make no difference. But, and all in this is yellow sweet corn, uh, yellow corn malt, and sugar, and water. That's all that's in it. Like I said, this is the damn last run of liquor that men and JB will ever fool with. I wouldn't do it now, but I yeah, just want to make this video so the younger folks can see what a hell of a life a moonshiner has. Because when I'm gone, the damn liquor's gone. And I'm just about gone. This is a brand new steel. We just made it about two or three weeks ago. Me and JB made it. I guess that'll be the last one of them I ever make, too. Matter of fact, I, I know it is. It's hard work even making a steel, let alone make the liquor. That's even worse. This is what, what I'd call a piss pot. It don't hold but 50 gallon. If you're gonna make liquor, ain't used playing with it. The last thing I ever helped run, helped 20 barrels. 20 times what that can hold. I'm gonna light this thing. Be the last thing I ever light. And once I get it lit, I've got to take off for a few minutes, and I'm gonna leave you with JB, and he's gonna show you how you make that paste that goes on there. And when it gets steam and heat up to it, like I said, it gets harder than a minister's pecker. That wood in there is locust wood. Now, you talk about something get it hot, that's dead locust. It don't put off a lot of smoke, see? When you're making liquor out in the woods like this, you want to keep a smoke down as much as you can. Some nosy son of a bitch will see it and call the law on you. That's the reason you need to burn dead locusts. Or a long time ago, some chestnut trees was in this country before the blight killed them. People burnt dead chestnuts. It didn't give off no smoke much at all. I'm fixing to make the paste to go around all the connections when we get it set up. I use half and half of wheat bran and half flour. Yeah, this is the best because it's easier to put on and then it, it just gets hard. It popcorn said a while ago. I don't think he's got anything on the market to do the job. <laughs> He's made enough of this paste to make everybody a biscuit in Maggie Valley, I'd say. Just like mixing up dough. You know, growing up, kids would do about anything. We was at a friend's house one time. A bunch of us kids were running around playing. He had a bunch of hogs. And one of us come up with the idea, well, Get a ear of corn, get some wire and wrap it around the ear of corn and hook it to the electric fence you had around there. Shock them hogs. Well, we done it. Hell, every one of them come up there and they talking about squealing. Now they was squealing. We was having the time. And they finally quit messing with it. Well, 
we just going to get rid of the evidence. We took that wire off and throwed it away. Now, old guy, he went to feed his hogs the next morning. They wouldn't eat the corn. He said, dang, I don't know what's the matter with these hogs. Well, one of us, one of them snitched on us all. Now you're talking about the whooping now. We got it. <laughs> we didn't do no more of that. That corn's a, it's fixing the ball here in a little bit. It took some work to set this up. If it hadn't been for them Bradley boys, I mean, we'd, it took me and JB a whole month. It would. Bradley dug that hole right over there, what barrel's in. Hell, it didn't take him 15 minutes, and it took me all day. Yeah. And he cut us that big pile of campfire wood behind you there at the shack. He got more cut up here in the woods to haul down here. And all that behind. Yeah, and him and his brother cut all that and brought it up here. That's that Tennessee clay. It'll stay there. So you can't make a steel furnace out of this mountain dirt. It'll fall out there when it got hot. This won't fall out. See, once I pull that steel out of there, I saved a bucket of that red mud somewhere. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I tear the furnace partly down to get it out. All right, I'm gonna take it my time and fix it back like it was. So it'll stay here. If somebody wants to come up here and bust this down, it'll be here 50 years from today. I'm trimming this worm up a little. I, I just sawed it off and it's got little frizzes of copper on it. And I don't want that shit to get in my liquor. Me and Lethe made something like this one time at the river. On that little old pot, she had to tell 35 gallons, and your hole's 50. And we tempered it in water. Of course, you don't make much liquor when you temper it in water, because it takes the proof down real fast. And if you use backing, you come out making more liquor. But we're going to make it like it did 100 years ago, like my granddaddy made it. Be tempered in water. What little liquor comes off of this? Right people to pay you $100 a gallon for it. Sure would. Oh, she's ready to put the cap on. See the steam coming out of it? That's, that's liquor I'm losing. Hell yeah, we don't lose no liquor. As Bubba says, I'm gonna make some wiki today. Be the last damn run of wiki that I'm wearing fool with. We ain't ready to cap yet. We gotta put the backings. Oh yeah. Well, I'm glad you saw that. JB, go see if you can find them backings we got hid. <laughs> yes, sir, Moonshiner. Had a hard way of going. I'll probably spill some of it, but I don't care. So what are the backings made from again? The backings is the last thing that comes off when you make a run of liquor. This is some, uh, we'd, it's been hid since 1997 when, when I quit making liquor. They caught me in 98, so I quit. But this backing has been hid in the woods ever since then. I didn't spill no damn drop of that. This is gonna be some of the finest liquor that's ever been made in the world. It's been so long since I made any on wood, I tell you what, I hope I don't mess up because that fire is hard to regulate. <clears throat> Get too hot, it'll boil that beer up there and it'll come plumb over in that cap down here, that's what you call puking. And it'll run your liquor because your liquor will come out of where looking like what they make on Cosby, it looks like that buttermilk. This stump post is cut out like that in the bottom. 
that V-shape cut out. So when that steam comes down, it can escape out in there and come up back up in this keg. And then it comes over and hits this worm. And when it gets in that barrel of cold water wire, it turns back into a liquid and comes out the bottom 180 proof. Now put it down there. Whoa, hold it, hold it. Now. That's good. I should have hammered that out a little right there, but should have done this and should have done that. How well, now, JB, you can start laying the face to the cap and hand me a little over here and I'll start over here. That cap's already getting warm. That'd be liquor ice thing. Oh, no longer than 45 minutes. You've done a good job on that paste. Yeah, it makes a few rounds of it. You have to push this paste at every connection. Can you use anything besides the paste or? No, you gotta make paste out of bran and flour. Or you can grind up rye and make paste out of it. Or you can make paste out of Oatmeal. I ain't never made a perfect run in my life if something doesn't go wrong. I mean, something will go wrong every run you make. It may not be a major thing. I guarantee something will happen today, and I hope not nothing major like blow a cap or something, but that son of a bitch done start to boil. Listen to that. You hear it? Yep. Yeah, I hear it. And once it starts running, you have to always keep on the lookout for leaks. Cause it'll leak somewhere. I don't know where, but it will. I've dug ditches, I've worked on construction. I've done everything. And there ain't nothing no harder than what I'm doing, but it's I just it's just in my blood. I swore when I was a little old kid if I ever got big enough I'd I'd make liquor and haul it. I've had my picture right on the front page two times for this. <laughs> 1974, 1998. My smokestacks are sucking that smoke out pretty good, ain't it? Oh, yeah. Working perfect. Reckon this will do the shaking like old Elvis? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> the slower you run it, the better product your liquor comes out. About like a wooden match stem the way the old timers run it. Oh, shit! How damn I got an instant drunk. <laughs> I hear it thumping. Is it? I can't hive here. Oh yeah, I had to do a thump gag waltz. Lisa used to dance by the thump gag, by the racket it makes you keep time with it. Yeah, she called it the thump gag waltz. Yeah, she drank her about Two of them vine or sausage cans full of straight off that worm. She's tough. Then she'd start doing the thump gag walk. She'd hit every lick that did. <laughs> she starts off thumping real slow, she'd go. Then she keep getting faster. And you ought to seen her, hit something else. I've eaten them when we get done. I was a lot stouter back then than I am now. I'd, uh, she'd hang on the back of my overhauls because she'd be drunk in hell. And I'd have a load of liquor tied on my back with tow, in tow sacks. And she'd hang on to my overhauls and I'd drag her up out that damn laurel thicket. And when we got to the top, she'll say, well, now I don't need your pulling no more now. 
then we'd go on to the house, and then, by God, both of us would get drunk. We got liquid coming out. Oh, hell, where's that damn funnel at? I'm gonna let you catch that bottle half full, get the new out of the worm. I'm gonna wash that black stuff out of them far coals I put in here. The first jug of liquor I run on these new far coals, it's gonna be a little dingy colored, but that's nothing to be alarmed about. It'll clear up on the next one. Watch out, I got it now. See that liquor come out that stick, see it'll follow that stick. That's what I use that coon pecker for. I'd lay it, stick it in that worm coon pecker like that anyway. It's crooked and about that long. Well, according to how big a coon it was. When I had the big granddaddy coon, it was that long. And I carried that thing in my pocket for years. It was worse slick as a piece of glass I'd carried it so much. But somehow I lost it. The way you do that, and you got a wet place on your thump keg of leaking. If you got a little piece of, like, paper towel, that paper absorbs the water up and it'll, the paste will dry and then it won't leak no more. I wonder how I learned all this anyway. Watch what it does when you throw it in the fire. See that blue fire come out there? Good liquor. They hell how high? High? Nah, damn, I reckon high. They hit car, I reckon. Why, it's higher than I seen on them big rigs. Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> Smells good though, don't it? Enough to get 10 people drinking. Oh, bring me some paste, Debbie. Got a bad leak. You might have to get me a rag, JB. You're going to a strip. You know as little as this thing is. If that cap was to come off, it, 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 it's called you to death. Hang on. I need another string. Go in there under the bed and cut me off a piece of that gray string. How about this? That'll work. That's saving it. <laughs> Believe it or not, I learned this trick right here off that Snuffy Smith shit in the newspaper. <laughs> Comic strip. Yeah. You know there's people that pay a hundred dollars just to get to watch this go on. Do you know that? Ah, I don't care if it's leaking. I ain't gonna use it no damn more no way. Well, I'll tell you what, if there's any damn buzzards comes over here today, they better fly high. If they don't, they'll knock the top of them damn trees and they get a sniff of this. <laughs> yeah, they better fly high. Now this is the first that JB's ever helped me make on wood. This is his first time at this. But a long time ago when he helped me, He'd never seen a steel run, and when we quit, he was a damn good hand daddy. He caught on to everything I'd done, and everything I said. I learned from the best. Now that's coming out, not as big as a match stem right now, the fires are going down, but uh, you're not supposed to run it 
on a small pot like that, no bigger than a match stem. Because if, if you run any faster, it makes your liquor meaner the faster you run it. Makes it fire you to burn the hell out of you. But uh, this right here is going to be second to none because nobody will never do this again. This is the last time I'm going to ever do it. I mean, I'm not able to do it. Like I told Neil just if it hadn't been for Bill and his brother James, I couldn't have had this here. No way. Well, I mean, JB could have had it, but it took us a whole damn month, at least. It took us at least a month to get to watch here. How many jars of liquor do you think you've made in your life? They hell far. I don't even guess they make numbers that damn long. <laughs> Better ask me one time. <coughs> said, you got any liquor? I said, i tell you what you do. I said, you bring your 18 wheeler and I'll bust the damn tires on it. <laughs> That's a little bit of liquor. But I ain't got no more now. I've quit. Too many goddamn nosy son of bitches after me. Telling on me. Whatever. Is it important to keep them numbered as they come out? Yeah, because when you go to temper it, that tells you which jar is highest. <laughs> Higher. See, as you go backwards, that means it's higher. After you not got number 10 jar here, number nine's higher than it was. Number eight's higher than nine was. All the way back, see. I may run 14 on this one, cause that's some awful damn good slop. Some of this liquor I've heard of, I've heard them name, different names for it, like Painter Piss and Who Shot John. Block and tackle, you drink about a pint of it and walk a block and tackle any damn thing you see. And, uh, mule, uh, white mule, I've heard you call that. And two cats are fighting. Oh, I have many names for it. Splo. Alley Jim. I uh, can't think of more right now, I will like five maybe. I've got that CRS disease I meet up with. It can't remember shit. Yeah, I've made all kinds of liquor in, in my time. I made the fighting kind, the loving kind, the crying kind. I even made some one time and sold it to this couple. They was happily married the next damn week as divorced. What kind are you making today? Well, this I'm gonna make today. You got four damn fights to a pint. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Number five. I'd say we got nine more jars to go. Oh, I ain't checked this one. They hell far. They shit for. That's about the same as number one, ain't it? Just almost. <laughs> See them big beads, how fast they go away? That, that means it's high proof. 180. Yeah. Take your drink of that. That's some of the best. You drink that half of that, for that, that, high for that teacup right yonder full of that. You'd not get off this damn mountain, I'll guarantee you. No, you'd be laying somewhere. You'd be piled up right over in them weeds. <laughs> it's that powerful. I've never seen none made like this, only I've seen how many times. Me and Lethe Hicks made some at the river. Then me and JB made some at the Museum of Appalachia. And this run here, that's only three, three runs I've ever seen made with wood anyway. I mean, men, men, Lethe made a lot of runs with wood, but this is my third setup at it. Uh, and besides, we we only tempered one run with water, men, Lethe, because if you temper it back, and you end up with a lot more liquor. So that's what we done. We we was going at it for the volume. See, of course, it's still fine liquor, fine liquor. But it's even finer if you do it this way, temper it with water. But now, a long time ago, back when men, JB made before I quit. 
I got caught last time in 98 and I just quit. So, but we'd run a gallon every two and a half to three minutes. A whole damn gallon, not a jar, a whole gallon. I know it, spit them out. And if you run your liquor hot, it makes it mean. If you ain't got the, enough water to keep that worm getting cool, when you run it hot, it makes it mean fire and hell. It'll burn your throat out to drink it. After we get this tempered, I'm going to take me a, about a half a damn teacup full of it and drink it if it knocks my ass from off them weeds. I had an old 46 model Willis Jeep and it had a pinhole deep in the gas tank. It was under the driver's seat. And uh, I'd pour a gallon of gas in it that morning when I left Cosby. And it'd take me all the way to the top of Snowbird Mountain, that one gallon would. All right, I always kept me another gallon in the back of it. So I could pour it in that evening when I headed off Snowbird to get back to Cosby again. <coughs> so, I happened to look, damn, I'd forgot to set my gallon of gas in there. And I hadn't tempered the liquor, I just set it in the Jeep, and I had it numbered like that. The jugs, I had it in gallon glass jugs, and I had them numbered. Number two is your highest jug, and number three. Number one's got a little bit of condensation in it out of the worm, but two and three is kick ass liquor, I shot. I poured that number two jug in there. The old Jeep wouldn't start no way. It didn't have no compression in the motor. You always had to roll it off the start. You had to park it on a hill or you wasn't going to start it. I poured, I just had to pour that gallon of shots in there. I pushed it off. But damn, you couldn't see it from the blue smoke. Uh, but I'm, like I said before, I poured the shots in it. I met old man Nick Price coming up the mountain in that four-wheel drive Ford truck. He's just a flying. He popped corn and big logs down yonder at Ray Mathis's house and said, said, you better turn around and go back backside of Snowbird. I said, hell, I ain't got no gas. I've run out of gas. Well, he said, let's see if we can cipher some ice truck. I had a hose laying in the back of the old Jeep. We couldn't get that hose to fit in that truck gas tank. It made it wouldn't go in some way. So I told him, I said, well, that's when I poured the shots to it. I said, I'll make a damn thing run. I poured them shots out in there and fired it off. You couldn't see it for blue smoke. I backed it up in the woods, turned around, went across the backside of Snowbird by the tire and down the mountain, come out on Gracie Port and went on to Cosby with my liquor and everything else. One time I had me up four barrels and every time I went, the barrels would be down so much and your liquor's on top. When it works off, your liquor all comes to top. But every time I go run, all four barrels would be low, and I checked and checked for leaks. Not nary damn one of them leaked. And uh, I happened to know somebody to steal my beer. So I went to up to Cosby and got me four one-pound boxes of Epsom salts, and I poured one in each barrel. And I went back later on. Sure enough, they was down like they had been before. But this other feller, seen these other two fellers that stole my beer, said they had a, a jug in each hand, or two jugs or something. He said they'd go a little while and they'd take them a big drink. And they'd go a little while and take them a big drink. He said he just happened to be out squirrel hunting and seen what was going on. And he said in a few minutes, said they wouldn't get 10 feet let out to drop their bridges and shit. Them Epsom salt give them a shit sure enough. I, and I, when I put it back again, see, I'm Epsom salts won't hurt it after you boil it in there, but if you drink it out in it, that beer, it'll get you. But I never did have no more beer stole. That was it. When they first opened that interstate in 68, I'd have come off Snowbird, I'd about drunk. I had a load of liquor in the back of that old 46 Jeep. And, uh, and, uh, I got down there, right before you get to Waterville exit there, coming down Green Corner Road. I damn, there was, must have been a hundred highway patrols and sheriffs and rescues and uh, stressed out limos and I didn't know what in the <coughs> hell was going on. 
They was uh, having a ribbon cutting ceremony for that Interstate 40 when they opened it in 1968. But they didn't pay me no attention about more than nothing. I just shut the motor off on that old Jeep because it didn't have no muffler. If you heard it for five miles, but I shut the motor off this Lake Coast right through them there and they never even seen me. I got by and they didn't get me. Now them beans cooked in that cast iron pot, they don't look very appetizing at all, but that's some of the best eating that you'll ever eat in your life. Set them there and stay warm. Oh, that's pretty. Damn. Damn, I believe that's where I have five fights to hunt instead of four. God damn. Mmm. Well, the more than I took of that, it went to my head, this fly. That's a powerful shit, watch this. See, when that, I told you about that paste, when it gets hot, when that hot heat hits it, it gets harder to minister, Dick. It's still clear, and that sign has still not lost its proof. That's clear, ain't it? Oh, that's number 10.
Now the preacher he came by, he head was mighty high, said his wife was down with the flu. Thought he just ought to get a cord on that good old mountain. And them that refuse it all of you. I love shook my mug if you fill up my jug with that good old mouth one more time. You ain't coming down much, Joe, are you? Let me, let me stick my head down a minute. Too far down in there, you can't get out. <laughs> I tell you, when you when you temper it together like that, it smells better and gets better, don't it? on this. If your water won't bead, it won't make liquor. Get it on the north side where it's going to make it. Yeah. Show this girl that look at that Abigail. Watch. Watch this liquor, bro. Well they call it far water. Be ready to go to market. <laughs> Straight to the Asheville Farmer's Market. Yeah. Just about it. Couldn't dab water jerk up there and pour it in before I noticed it. Didn't help it. Man. It'll be all right in the morning. That water will do it, won't it? I'll see Leon Will kill a whole half hour. Gene Morfield. Yeah. He, he used to be a professional wrestler in the circuit. And his name, years of it. his name was Thundercloud. Chief Thundercloud. Chief I Thundercloud. Kill best sir. And I have proof of the man that owns Cock County Wholesale. That him and Gene used to walk in them bars in Cock County and close them down. That's a fact. And by God, I've been told, I don't know what's the truth or not, but they said one night that Moorfield went in the bar over on Bobby. That's the truth. And you don't go to a bar and buy me unless you've got balls as big as that bucket over there. <laughs> they got them. They told Check me. Now I'm saying they told me. I wasn't there. But they told me that he walked in that bar and he went in there and he, he shut the bar down. He, he, All the patrons in the bar, get the hell out of here, they left. The man that runs the place, the bartender, said, I ain't going no damn where. 
Morfield cut him with an ass of bitches and threw him through a goddamn swinging door. Throw him out in the parking lot. Throw him out in the goddamn yard. I guess them old days is over down there now. See what it was, I, I was about drunk and I went in there. And I went in to get me another beer and he wouldn't sell me one. He said I had enough. And I said, no, I said, I'll let you know when I've had enough. And uh, so he made me mad and that's when I cleared the whole place and locked the doors. And I sat in there drunk, all I wanted to drink. And then I, when I got ready to leave, I just throwed him a hundred dollar bill down at the cash register and got up and walked out. That, that's how it went. Run everybody off. See, he didn't take nothing for nothing. He paid for it. Now, by God. Well, we're gonna tear this son of a bitch down. It'll be the last time it'll ever be put up. The first time and the last, and all at the same time. Hell yeah. It was a long, hard damn day yesterday. It's a shame to turn this good slop out. Man could put a bag of sugar back in that and yeah, I know. make seven more gallons of real damn liquor. That's just the last one. This is it. We'll drain everything at one time. Thump keg, pot, cooling tub. It's going down the drain, ain't it? Them miles off be higher than that one. Come out here. Easy enough, didn't it? Set down the brace. Yeah. Don't hit the pot. <clears throat> Take it above the pot and lay it down. Well, that'll be all right. I'm a bitch. Harder to tear down it was to put a damn. Buddy, this has been a hard ass job. You ain't shit. I don't think I ever want to make any more liquor. No, nope, not me either. So would be. No, that's the whole thing. Yeah, that's the whole thing. I thought coming too. Well, I hate to pour this good stuff out, but I don't need it no more. Look at that corn down the bottom of that, see it? Them, them, them damn wildlife will get drunk now, by God. Damn, that's heavy.
them birds, buzzards or crows or whatever eats that there, that corn's full of alcohol. They'll fly into one of them damn trees and bust their damn head. Going out for its last time. Well, we finally got the damn thing on here. It'll be the last time this'll ever be fooled with. Yeah. I got all the making liquor I wanted just yet. I ain't gonna never make no more. I ain't able to start with. About kill me. You carrying your liquor with you? Oh, I ain't got none of the liquor. I give all the... They can't catch me with none of it because I give it to my spectators just I had several people up here watching this and they took it home with them for a souvenir, more or less. So, I ain't got no liquor. I done give it away. Well, I believe I'm going to head off the mountain if I can get this thing started. <clears throat>
know that. Ah, look at this. I know yeah. that. Get that song. I bet you. Oh, you got it. Yeah, I got it up for a day. I like that. I like that.